Aircraft carriers are incredible islands of steel from which hundreds of fighter jets take off every day. In general, these are aircraft between 15 and 20 meters long, and no one in their right mind would dream of operating a 30-meter-long C-130 Hercules with a 40-meter wingspan on one of those ships. Well, evidently in the 1960s the US Navy was in search of new thrills, as they decided to test how difficult it would be to operate a Hercules from the deck of an aircraft carrier. The idea was so far-fetched that the officers who received the mission thought it was just a joke. In October 1963, with rough seas, a team of pilots broke all records by making the largest and heaviest landing in naval aviation. In this video we want to review that story and analyze how difficult that feat really was. The C-130 Hercules is a medium-heavy transport aircraft, powered by four large turboprop engines. Since its commissioning in 1957, it has become the main letter of North American tactical transport. Within the Navy it was called the KC-130, and one of its main functions was to fly as a tanker, that is, as a fuel tank for aerial reloading. It quickly stood out in this role, so several units were sent to Vietnam to assist the F-4 Phantom in their operations. But beyond all these achievements, in 1963 the Navy wanted to find out if it was possible to operate the KC-130 Hercules from a boat. That would open up a universe of tactical possibilities, making intercontinental missions much easier, even more so considering that the US aircraft carrier fleet was already emerging as the largest on the entire planet. But what platform could support the titan of the skies? The aircraft carrier USS Forrestal was commissioned in 1955 and named after Secretary of Defense James Forrestal. This ship was the first of its class, and the first North American aircraft carrier that could be classified as a super carrier, that is, a large aircraft carrier with spectacular operational performance. In addition, it was the first ship built with an angled flight deck, steam catapults to assist takeoff, and deck lights to aid landing. At 325 meters long and with a beam of almost 40 meters, the USS Forrestal was the pride of the United States Navy. If there was any ship capable of hosting the KC-130 Hercules, it was this one. In the 60s, the C-1 Trader was the aircraft in charge of carrying out logistics trips to and from aircraft carriers. The Trader had a length of 12.4 meters and a cargo capacity of 3,800 kilograms, which were dwarfed in comparison to the 20,000 kilograms of cargo of the C-130. That is why, as crazy as it may seem, the Navy ordered a study to see how possible it was to operate a Hercules from the seas. For the risky mission, the force assembled a special group to carry out the tests. Leading the way was Lieutenant James Flatley, accompanied by pilot W. W. Stovall, his co-pilot, engineer Ed Brennan, and advice from Lockheed test pilot Ted H. Lamar. All of them were assigned to Operation Super COD, which stands for Carrier Onboard Delivery. Many years after completing the perilous mission, flatly recalled, the Navy couldn't find a C-130 crew who wanted to go, so naval aviation set its sights on fighter pilots who couldn't even spell propeller and they gave us the keys of a Hercules. Reports say that when flatly received the assignment, he first thought it was a force commandos prank. But there was not an ounce of irony in those orders. Operating a C-130 from the deck of an aircraft carrier? Someone must be joking were the lieutenant's words. Once the crew was formed, the training period began. Considering how difficult and historical the mission was, the preparation was rather brief. According to Lieutenant Flatley, they had a familiarization flight of just four hours with the Lockheed test pilot. Then, they made a total of 100 landings on the runway of the Patuxent River Naval Air Station which had a route similar to that of the deck of the USS Forrestal.
The Hercules used was a refueling aircraft that operated in the Navy. Which is why it had the name KC-130F, like all the Hercules on board. The aircraft did not receive many structural modifications, the most notable being the placement of a smaller front landing gear, a more efficient anti-lock system, and the removal of the fuel tanks located under the wings. All these modifications were made in the Lockheed workshops in the days before the mission. Thus came the Day of Truth, October 30, 1963. The crew of the USS Forrestal had to remove all the stop cables from the deck, since the Hercules was operating without a hook. That day the sea was especially rough, with winds of up to 40 knots, but the mission could not be postponed. The KC-130F left Florida, heading towards the ship that was waiting for it on the high seas, accelerating at its maximum power to counteract the thrust of the ocean. Imagine having to land on a concrete island that is in constant motion. Such were the conditions in which Lt. Flatley and his team made history by landing the gigantic Hercules on the deck of the aircraft carrier. To accomplish this, Flatley put the propellers into reverse thrust while the plane was still several feet above the deck. When it touched the surface, the Hercules was put into full reverse and came to a stop after 85 meters. In that landing, the total weight of the plane was 38,000 kilograms, but the Navy wanted much more, the desired figure was 54,000 kilograms, that is, with a full load. To be able to descend with that weight, the plane required 140 meters to land and 227 to take off, a huge percentage of the total length of the ship. According to the reports, the tips of the wings of the Hercules passed only 5 meters away from the command station. So there was no room for miscalculation. This landing was a world record, the KC-130F was the largest aircraft to take off and land from an aircraft carrier. To this day, that record still stands, and it will hardly be surpassed since naval transport does not depend on aircraft of such a size. In total, 21 complete landings and 29 touchdown and takeoff landings were made, that is, taking off again the instant the aircraft makes contact with the surface. While Lt. Flatley and his team demonstrated that it was possible to land a Hercules on an aircraft carrier, it also became clear that doing so requires enormous logistical effort and surgical precision. In a real context, the risk of accidents was very high, and any mistake could result in an unprecedented tragedy. In addition, to be able to use the Hercules correctly, the deck of the aircraft carriers had to be modified, which implied a huge investment. Over time came the C-2 Greyhound, considerably smaller than the C-130, but with adequate cargo capacity, a long operating range and, most of all, no need for a suicide pilot to land on deck. That was how the story of the C-130s and aircraft carriers ended as soon as it began, but the feat of Lt. Flatley and his team is still remembered throughout the United States Navy. We have reached the end of the video and we want to thank you for joining us again to learn about the most striking facts in world aviation. We say goodbye until the next episode of Military Aviation.